Hello everyone. I have an update today because uh, I've just put the polishing touch to my latest article in relation to why you do need to secure a um, good talented agent in order to make it in the creative industries. Um, Along my span as an entertainment lawyer uh, focusing on advising the creative industries for the last 10 years now, I, um, I couldn't help but notice that most of the very um, uh, the top talents always has uh, an agent, always has representation, uh, except from very rare exceptions. Uh, for example, Bill Murray does not have an agent. Bill Murray, the, uh, the actor, the American actor, doesn't have an agent. So apparently if you call him, if you manage to find his phone number, he will actually pick up the, the, the phone himself. But aside from Bill Murray, every star, every um, uh, artist, every actor, every film director, every film writer has an agent. Same thing for models. Most of them have agents. Um, same thing for writers bit of books, comic books, etc. And um, and the list goes on. So in the creative industries, because there are quite low barriers to entry, every, everyone can brand himself an actor or a, a, a film director or an artist or a model. Therefore, um, the gatekeepers are the agents because they will only invest and they will only represent the best talent, those who are the most skilled in their field. So why do you think you need an agent aside from, you know, the cred, the credibility that it will give you to have an agent? Well, because as a talent, as a creative, you, you have honed your skills uh, in order to be the best at your craft, the best in, uh, in your, act, your acting skills, the best as a sculptor, the best as a painter, the best as an artist. The, the best as a model, I don't know what's the best as a model, but you see what I mean, looking after your body, looking after your health. Um, so so you, you, these are all, so to speak, left um, brain abilities, right? Skills, um, the creativity, the originality, etc., etc. But to make this skill set that you have as a creative a proper career, which, you know, brings you... Uh, financial remuneration and enough money to pay the bills, you also need to have another uh, skill set aside that one, aside the creativity, which is more, which taps more into the right side of a brain, um, i.e., you know, the ability to negotiate the contracts, the ability to network and to find the right um, the right end customers, uh, for example, an artist um, uh, is, is, uh, uh, needs to be put in contact with the best collectors, art collectors. A, uh, an actor he also needs to be put in touch with the best film directors, the best uh, film producers. Same thing for a music composer. If he or she wants to work for the uh, film industry, then he needs to, or she needs to be in, uh, put in touch with the uh, best film directors and best film compo uh, and best film producers. So um, another, you know, uh, task of an agent is to ensure to do all the uh, the press uh, press relations, the PR, the digital marketing, the marketing for uh, for a talent, uh, as well as as I said, negotiating the um, the contracts with uh, for, for any project that the talent would do, as well as making sure that the monies are being paid in time by the uh, end customers, and um, also uh, in case there is a you know a reputation man management issue, being able to resolve it for the talent. So the skill set is therefore um, the skill set of a very good agent, and that is complementary with the skill set of a talent, which, uh, which is mostly the skill set of uh, on the creative side. So the idea when you enter into your, uh, your 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 creative field in the creative industry is that you create the right team for you. you therefore, by this, I mean finding the right agent. Um, and there are var various avenues to do this. One avenue is, for example, if you've um, graduated from one of the top creative schools, such as, you know, Central St. Martins for fashion, um, the Royal Academy of Arts for uh, art student uh, artists and and um and designers goldsmith as well uh, for example had as uh, some of his alumni sarah lucas and uh, um Samuel, uh, damien hurst 
um, and also Tracy Emin, I think. So um, and some of our prestigious schools where the agents go, you know, to have a look at the graduate final graduation projects or the final graduation uh, uh, presentations, etc., are the National Film School uh, and TV and National Film and TV School in the UK, and also RADA, the Royal Academy of uh, of um, uh, Royal Academy of, of of basically of sorry. Uh, of dramatic art, RADA. So, that, for example, Tom Hiddleston um, has studied at RADA. And, uh, well, and that's where they get picked up by agents, you know, all these young talents. Um, another avenue, of course, if you are very lucky, is to have uh, friends and, and family members who introduce you to an agent. And as I'm sure you know, there's a lot of nepotism going on in the, uh, in particular, in the, the film industry. And, um, and that is definitely, you know, if you have an advantage like this, you, your mum or, or dad can actually present you to his or her agent. That is wonderful. Not everybody is born with a spoon of gold, a golden spoon in their mouth. So another a third avenue is to actually call call the agents, the top agents in your business, present them with your portfolio of the best, you know, work you've done so far and CV of the best work or show reel of the best work you've done so far and go for it. Although you might you, you need to expect quite a lot of rejection in that case because uh, because you're cold calling. So that could be quite tough for your ego. So um how do you work with an agent? Well, you actually uh, are going to enter into a presentation agreement with the agent. And um, as a rule of thumb, it's very important to have such representation agreement um, reviewed, amended and negotiated by an entertainment lawyer like ourselves at Crifovi if you want to avoid any disasters. We, have, we, we very often, you know, see some um, creative individuals who've signed, without the advice of any lawyer, any solicitor, a, uh, a representation ag agreement with uh, a, 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 an agent. And it turns out that it's actually quite dreadful uh, and very unfair um, for them in terms of the terms. Or sometimes they're not paid the monies. There are lots of um, uh, modeling agencies um, in the last few years which have been, you know, uh, um, pointed the figure out because they were doing a dreadful job in terms of a, a condition set out in their modeling uh, a, a agreement and also in terms of uh, deducting an enormous amount of expenses from the lawyer's uh, gross income, sorry, from the model's gross income. Uh, therefore, the, mod the models ended up in debt uh, uh, while they were working all the time. So uh, there's something uh, t terribly wrong there. So, um, the agency business is quite unregulated, aside from France, which has some kind of uh, regulation uh, in the uh, French uh, Labour Code. Uh, the uh, uh, profession of artistic agent is recognised and there's a cap imposed by law to the percentage commission that the, uh, the French agent can take from the gross income uh, made by the uh, the talent, his or her talent, and that is 10%. That is not a lot. Um, but hey, if it's 10% of, you know, a 2 million fee uh, received by uh, Gérard Depardieu on his next film shoot, well, that's 10% of quite a lot. Um, well, if you have 25%, if it's 25% of nothing, you end up with nothing. So, um, in the UK and the US, it's much more a laissez-faire approach, whereby um, the negotiation percentage rate is uh, determined freely by the parties. I would say that uh, a, uh, basically a, a rule of thumb in the um, in the film uh, industry is usually fifteen percent. Uh, but for example, Elvis Presley um, uh, had a, uh, had to pay a fifty percent five zero fifty percent com commission to his agent, um, colonel something. He was not a colonel, but uh, he was more like a, a dodgy guy. But um, so yeah, Elvis was on a fifty percent commission with his with his agent, for example, which. Uh, well, it didn't end up, end up very well, as we all know. But um, so I'd say that usually in the music industry, for sure, but also I think also in the film industry, it's 15 percent in the UK and the US. Um, I also have seen, you know, 50 percent commissions for art galleries, uh, which were selling some consigned artworks on behalf of artists. So basically, it's all down to the um, negotiation between the parties, what is set out in the representation agreement that you've signed with the um, 
with the agent. Um, and um, and um, as I said, it really is quite useful to have the draft uh, agreement, representation agreement checked by a lawyer. It also could be useful to uh, uh, register yourself in some of the top trade unions representing you know, creative professionals, such as equity in the UK, for example, so that you get some ongoing business, career and legal advice from uh, from these people at the trade union. And um, yeah, good luck with your endeavours. Um, we've just issued a news and released a newsletter and an article in relation to uh, which is entitled, sorry, why getting an agent is critical to make it in the creative industries. There are lots of useful links in there to uh, articles about the best agents in, you know, in niche creative agencies. So don't hesitate to check this uh, this, um, uh, this new article and this new newsletter on crefovi.com and crefovi.fr. And um, um, do uh, uh, click on uh, like this video if you liked it. And um, do subscribe to our uh, channels um, if, uh, if you also want to have um, our next news. Bye for now.